Hello friends, uh, welcome again uh, to the finite element analysis course. Now in earlier two videos we have seen the um, what is the plane stress and plane strain condition. Then uh, also we have seen uh, how to obtain the shape function for the constant triangular element uh, and how to select the polynomial function with the help of this uh, Pascal's triangle. Uh, <coughs> We will see one exercise today and then we will move to the next topics uh, that is the natural coordinates and uh, to how to transform um, from one coordinate system to the another coordinate system. So that we will see and then we will find out the shape functions in terms of natural coordinates for uh, triangular and rectangular element. So, so again. Uh, I would, I would like to recommend the students to refer these books. All the contents of these videos are taken from these books. So for further details, you can refer these books. So we have already seen, suppose now this is a linear triangular element and uh, this is expressed in terms of uh, xy coordinate system. These are the node points 1, 2 and 3 because this is a 3 node triangular element and we have seen that the um, this uh, strain displacement relation is uh, obtained um, for the triangular element and uh, these are the shape functions already we derived these shape functions then this matrix once you differentiate with respect to the this uh, n1 n2 and n3 so we will get this the uh, b matrix that is the strain displacement relation matrix and this is the displacement vector so epsilon is equal to bq so this is the b matrix completely and this is the displacement vector q matrix and um, we know uh, these are all where we will get these constants all these constants are already we have obtained which are completely um, found out if you know the x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 coordinates of this triangular element so based on this we will try one more exercise uh, suppose now this is a problem from p shishu book so problem given is that for triangular element you are given the displacement u1 u2 u3 okay so u1 u2 and u3 and again uh, displacement v1 v2 v3 so nodal displacement values of the nodal displacements are given and then you are asked to find out the what is the displacement at node point p means uh, uh, already uh, as i mentioned so shape functions are uh, used uh, to obtain the displacement at any point within the element. So here it is asked how will obtain the shear, uh, displacement at point P 2 comma 2 if the nodal displacement at node point 1, 2 and 3 are given. Okay. So and also we need to calculate the uh, element stress. Element stress also we have to calculate if the value of Young's modulus is given 200 GPA and this is we have to obtain for the plane stress condition. So first point in this is that we need to uh, find out these coefficients because the shape functions are given here and all the shape functions here we need the values of these constants a1, b1, c1. So once you find out these constants uh, from the coordinates so we can find out the shape function n1, n2 and n3 and this shape function you have to find out for the point P2. So for this point means this is the value of this is the value of x so wherever x is there we will put this x value and this is the value of y so this is y so means at p22 so this is x and this is y okay so wherever there is a x and y you just put the values and this constant you will taking from this accordingly you got the shape function n1 1 4 n2 1 4 and n3 1 by 2 once you know the shape function then next is the displacement so we know this relation u is equal to n1 u1 plus n2 u2 plus n3 v3 so we will get the displacement um, by putting the values of um, u1 u2 and u3 so these are the u1 u2 and u3 these values are given so we will get u is equal to 2 this u2 is equal to 3 and u3 is equal to 5 so you got the displacement in x direction for point p then you got the displacement in y direction for point t that is the n1 v1 plus n2 v2 plus n3 v3 so we got this uh, 
where v1 v2 and v3 these are the values of the nodal displacement in y direction okay so obtain the displacement of point p22 so this is the we have obtained the displacement for the point 22 in x and y direction now to find out the element stress so element stress means we have to first find out the strain and from the strain we can find out the stress so how to find out the strain we know the strain displacement relation matrix so we have to find out first b matrix so which is this b matrix already we have seen this b matrix which one upon two a this one already we have derived this so once you find out this b matrix then where area a is given as we can we know the already x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 coordinates from this we can find out the area this comes out to be two unit so from this we will get the b matrix this way okay once we get the b matrix then next is the already displacement vector is also already given that is this q is nothing but the displacement vector that is the u1 v1 u2 u2 like that so epsilon is equal to bq so we this is the b matrix then this is the this is what this is the q matrix that is u1 v1 u2 u2 and u3 u3 this is the q matrix and once you multiply this two matrices dimensions of this matrix is 3 by 6 and dimensions of this matrix is 6 by 1 so once you multiply these two matrix you will get the 3 by 1 this is the strain this is the element and strain then how to obtain the stress so we know the formula for the stress is sigma is equal to dbq okay so sigma is equal to dbq so where d is the material property matrix and bq is already found out so if you multiply by this matrix with this matrix you will get the stress so this way we can find out the uh, obtain the solutions and um, for the um, triangular element if you know the values of the nodal displacement now moving forward um, what is the natural coordinates system see natural coordinate system is basically the local coordinate system so which allows the specification of a point within the element by its set of dimensionless numbers dimensionless numbers whose magnitude never exceeds unity so these are generally denoted as a zeta in one dimension and uh, zeta and eta in two dimensions advantage of using the natural coordinate system is that uh, it is convenient in constructing the interpolation function these are written locally and uh, dimension these natural coordinates always varies from minus 1 to plus 1 and if you go for the numerical integration by using maybe gauss quadrature rule so handling with the natural coordinate system becomes very easy because uh, these are non dimensional numbers and this varies from minus 1 to plus 1 total length of the element is 2 so and this element you can if you see here it is a coordinate system is a cartesian coordinates so we need to find out now what is the if you want to use the natural coordinate system and uh, that is a local coordinate system ultimately we have to transform this into the global coordinate system so when you want to transform this from into from into global coordinate system so there you must be know the relationship between the local coordinate and global coordinates so that's why we'll try to obtain here now just consider the element shown in figure a so here this is the element e we can say the length of the element as l we'll denote the length of the element as l okay this is the length of the element now this is the node point 1 and this is the node point 2 this is the x1 coordinate this is the x2 coordinate and this is the x coordinate in general now this is the element expressed in terms of the natural coordinates where the node 1 having the zeta is equal to minus 1 node 2 zeta in the plus 1 and this is the zeta in general so here the uh, it is represented in terms of a local coordinate and that is a natural coordinate this is a cartesian coordinate 
So we have written this equation intuitively and we have to just verify this relation whether it is a valid or not. Now just see zeta is equal to it is uh, expressed in terms of this x1 x2. So we have written this relation. Now consider the node 1 okay at node point 1. What is the x? x is x1 at node point 1 x is x1. So if you put x is equal to x1 so x1 minus x1 that will be 0 so this whole will come 0 so zeta will be minus 1 that's what at node point 1 zeta is minus 1. So this is verified. Now coming to the next that is the node number 2. So at node number 2 what is the x? x is going from x2 x is x2. So if you substitute here x as a x2, so this will be a x2 minus x1. So this is numerator is x2 minus x1, denominator is also x2 minus x1. So this will get cancelled. So 2 minus 1 will be 1. So at node 2, zeta is 1, that is plus 1. So this is also verified. Means this relation, whatever we have written intuitively, this holds good mm, or it is verified that it is satisfying the conditions. So this is the relations that we obtain between the local coordinate and the this Cartesian coordinates or I will say local coordinate system. Now with this relation zeta is this and uh, if you differentiate this, we will get that d zeta is equal to 2 upon L dx. So, change of variable from x to d zeta, we can write this dx is equal to L by 2 d zeta. And this L by 2 is determinant of j, where j is called as the Jacobian of the transformation. Basically, it is a scale factor, which gives the relationship between this zeta and x coordinate that is the x coordinate xy coordinate domain to the zeta eta domain or zeta domain in one dimension case similarly we can write it if we do, if you go for two dimensions now this is written only for one dimension if you go for the two dimensions we can write eta is equal to in terms of y okay so, in general now, so if you consider for the two dimension system, zeta is given as this, eta is given as this. So, for two dimension case, relationship between the dx dy, basically this is area in xy domain and in transform zeta eta domain is given as f of, if it is a function is f of xy dx dy is equal to f of zeta eta determinant of j d zeta theta. So, where j is called as the Jacobian of the transformation. So, Jacobian can be regarded as a scale factor that yields area dx dy from d zeta theta. Here we understood that the how to write a uh, local coordinates for the particular element and by knowing the relationship between the local coordinate and global coordinate we can transform from local coordinate system to the global coordinate system. So this will be uh, more clear when we will see the numerical indication by Gauss quadrature. There these things will be uh, more clear. Now uh, we have to see how to obtain the shape function in terms of the natural coordinate system. So this part will continue in the next video. Uh, that is the extension of this video. Okay. Thank you.